would like to introduce my father, Michael Melanson, from St. Patrick's Church here in Catskill, and at Atkins. And it's a great honor to be with you on this bittersweet day. I call it a bittersweet day because it has two aspects to it. The bitter side of it, of course, is what we see today. The absence of a beautiful person, an aunt, friend, neighbor, relative. And the sweet side of that is in our faith, in the Catholic faith, knowing that this is simply a body, but it's not the life that she was. That moves on. And that's the beautiful part of the bittersweet of this. All of us will have to go through the transition that she has already gone through. The existence from this life into the next. How do we know all that? And what's it all about? Well, first and foremost, Hollywood's got it all wrong. <laughs> They're not even close to having it, what God tells us it's about. The only way we really know what afterlife is, or even if there is a God, is that the fact is that God himself, and we use that him just because of our language, so there's no other way to express it, so him or her, God is not gendered. But I'll just probably use that because it's easier to speak that way. God himself came from heaven and became one of us as a human being in the form of a man, his choice. And he told us what it's like. In a few minutes, I'm going to read some things that were recorded from his very voice about what heaven is like. And it's wonderful. And the only way to get there is that when this existence is over, there's two things that you need to do to get into heaven. And you know what? They're both free. There's no cost. It's wonderful. And one is belief. God demands you believe in him. But you're not forced to because we also are given a great gift of free will. So you believe, that's one. And number two, you believe in who he sent. This person's name is Jesus. It's the name that was given to him by the angels when Mary was conceived by the Spirit of God. By no man should she conceive a child. And she was conceived of Jesus through the power of God's Spirit. Those two elements, which are free, and you're not forced into doing it. But when you do believe it, Eternity is a long time. It's a free gift to you. And that Jesus went to the cross just for you, just for her. If you were the only people on earth, he would still do it just for you. It's an amazing thing. I'll tell you more about that in a second. So let us begin our prayers today. If I may ask you to pronounce her name for me. Argentina. Say it again. Argentina. Argentina. I want to make sure I got it right with no offense, but that depends on so much. Argentina. Thank you. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all ties of friendship and affection which knit us together as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good things that we have done, and He forgives us our sins. Let us pray, asking God to guide us. Argentina. 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 I'm going to be. Just forgive me on that one, please. Let's ask God to guide Argentina to her Himself. <coughs> our Lord, our God, the death of our sister recalls our human condition in the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain. And as we pray for those who love her and who are loved by you, through Christ our Lord, Amen. We hear from a letter that St. Paul wrote to the people of Rome. And Paul writes, If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, 
but handed them over for us all, how will he not also give us everything along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, we just celebrated at Easter, and who also was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. And what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? St. Paul says, no. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced, St. Paul says, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our responsorial psalm, your response is, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And if you're able to, please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you with me, so that where I am going, you also may be. Where I go, you know the way. But Thomas said to him, Master, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This is my favorite Gospel reading from St. John's Gospel. He's done several things. One, that Jesus is telling us a little bit about what heaven's like. How many people like to read books? You like to be a reader? I got to graduate school because I had to. <laughs> I'm not a good reader. And I very seldom read for pleasure. But when I do, I cheat. I read the first chapter, and then I've got to go read the last chapter. <laughs> I've got to see what's happening to Johnny Salad, Mary, or whatever the key characters are. And now I can go back through and continue reading, and I'll understand what they're doing and so forth. Anybody else read the last chapter first? Yeah. I, I, want to, I want to, but I don't. What? Yeah, really? I, I just sit there. I guess I'm keyed up. What is it? Okay, that's it. I go to the end. I'll read that. I can calm down. But that's just me. That's just me. So we don't know what the ending is. You know, I've got a great novel in there. I don't know what it's going to be. It's no different than life. We don't know what she already has experienced. Because when you were created, when each and every one of you were created, you came from the mutual love of your mother and father. Your father's sperm cell was a living cell. It was dead at the moment. And your mother's egg cell is a living cell. And each and every one of you women have the potential to be a mother, whether you are or not. You have the potential. What an awesome gift to carry a life in, within you. But those are living cells. And when they come together in their mutual love, 
No creation has taken place there because they're already living. God creates. And the definition of creation, taking nothing and making something. And only God can do that. And so you came along in the co-authorship of your mother and father. And that's the beautiful thing. And as she was created to her mother and father, she produced this beautiful woman. Now, I'll ask you a couple of questions here. To you, your family, anyone else. What was her favorite thing to do? Could you come back to one thing that she really liked doing? Listen to the radio. Just listen to the radio? Yeah. Uh, talk shows? Music? Music. music? What kind of music? Anything, really. Country? Like, like rock? Billy Joel? Yeah. Billy Joel? She did. So something about the Billy Joel's music, right? Excellent. Thank you. These are great memories. Don't lose them. Always remember that. In my day, I'm 148 years old, so uh, somewhere around I lost track of a century ago. I used to play in a rock band long before I became a priest, long before I knew who God was. For seven, for 10 years, I played in a rock and roll band during the 70s. So I know Billy Joel very well, and the Beatles, and the Rolling Stones, and all that. I played lead guitar. And uh, that's why we're hearing aids today. I came home after a gig and my head would go like this. And so now I can't hear. Um, but the, the beauty of this is that she has been given a special, special gift to you. And her love of Billy Joel, or music, if you will, generally, to sit and listen to the radio. How, how old was she? She was 75. 75. Well, she was a year younger than that. I'm 76. I can remember my father had built a cabin or a camp up in the Adirondack Mountains. Uh, we couldn't get TV reception. So at night time, when it got dark, we'd sit and listen to the radio, just like she did. And I can remember a lot of that uh, happening in my childhood. And I bet you she could tell you some great stories of what she used to listen to on the radio. Did she dance? No. No? She didn't get up and boogie it off? No. <laughs> can you picture it or what? <laughs> Yeah, it's possible, right? Maybe. But when you weren't looking, maybe she got up to and did, you know, who knows? Yeah, she's alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course we all do that, right? Everybody sings in the shower type of thing, yeah. <laughs> those are what we hang on to. Those beautiful memories. You know, they bring in the bittersweet side, as I mentioned earlier. But that's the sweet side. We always have that. Now, when Jesus talked about in the gospel I just proclaimed to you that in my father's house. So Jesus tries to tell us in our simplistic ways of comprehension. We can't fathom what it's like. So he tries to tell us in, in as, as, as easy a term as is without revealing the great uh, re reveal, the big reveal. That you have to wait for. So we get these little snippets in here throughout the Gospels of what it's like. So he says, in my father's house. Now what does that mean? Well, first of all, we have to understand who's Jesus' father. Well, it's not St. Joseph. Mary was conceived immaculately. There was no intercourse between any man with Mary to conceive Jesus. She was impregnated by God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, making Jesus fully God and fully man. And Mary, being Jesus' mother, makes Mary the mother of God. See how that works? Jesus is fully God, Mary's his mother, Mary's the mother of God. It's simple <laughs> mathematics. And so Jesus tries to tell us what it's like because he's been there. And he comes down on earth to tell us what she's experiencing today and how it can happen. So in my father's house, God the Father, there are many dwelling places. What do you do in a dwelling place? You dwell. What's that mean in English? You live. It's a place to live. You're not dead. Although we have a body in front of us, she's very much alive. You see, inside your body are many different things. We have all the organs that makes our body work. And when at one point in time, they don't work, or for whatever reason, the body cannot support the life that's in you, the essence of who you are, that continues. The body doesn't. But God is actually told us, he promised us that at one point within the realm of time, see all that exists outside of time, but within the realm of time this is not impossible for God to regather our ashes, wherever we are, put us back together and we'll be in heaven with a body and a soul. But until then, 
The, the life, her very life, listening to her radio, the essence of what made her who she is. What is it that makes you who you are? Some people call it a personality, you can call it anything you wish, but the essence of your life goes on forever. And that was a promise that Jesus gave us. And he tells us that in my Father's house are many dwelling places, and that he's going to prepare a place for you. Not only his apostles who he started the church with, you know, we have almost two billion people on earth who are Christian. Two billion! He started with 12. That's not bad. In 2,000 years, it was growing little by little. But there's a place for each and every one of us, designed for us. And guess what? Never die, never have pain, never experience anything but love. All, you may not even have to breathe. You have no needs for anything. And it's awesome. Awesome. Well, as I like to tell my grandchildren, awesomer. That's greater than awesome, I guess. <laughs> and all you need to do is believe in it. That whole idea of belief, when we have so many different beliefs, we have so many questions and so many problems. You know, why is this? Why is that? Why is this? Yeah, if we can answer a few of them, the rest of us just don't know the answer. God allows free will. When things happen, free will, things happen just because they happen. But the beauty of this is that when you do believe, it's given to you as a free gift. Now, to believe in something that's not true is, to me, and my personal uh, understanding, absolutely ridiculous. It's completely and totally ridiculous. If I were to tell you that this carpet over here is red, white, and blue, you'd say, wait a minute, Father. No, it's not. It's a tan color rug, you know. No, I believe it's red, white, and blue. You look at me as if I got six heads. It's not, correct? It's, it's not red, white, and blue carpet. Am I right? Mm -hmm. But what if someone came in and says, I believe it is? What would you think? <laughs> Get another set of glasses, my friend, because it's not. So why is it that people believe in things that are not true? It makes no sense. So seek the truth. And what's the truth? Well, it's not everything I say. It's what God has said. God says, I am the truth. End of story in this case. Put your belief in him, because he is the truth. From there we go into what we have here, what remains from her, and that one day we will transition the way she has already transitioned, from this realm into the next for eternity, if you but believe in the truth. challenges indeed it is. My brothers and sisters, our true home is in heaven. Therefore now let us pray to our Heavenly Father, as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death, so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servant in their grief, and to receive her into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive all of our sins and grant us a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless all those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. And eternal rest grant them to her reward and let perpetual light shine upon her. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go to take her to the final resting place. 
I will see you right to the center. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Want to our prize pot? Yes. Thank you. 